Hey Josh, here's the parts for the uh, power steering for the car that I got put together. So this is a electro-hydraulic power steering pump from a Toyota MR2. I had the hoses made up uh, to be modular. Uh, this one fitting has a, a swage lock fitting on it. Oh no, this one, sorry. This one's the OEM uh, Toyota connection that goes into the pump. The other end of that is a swage lock fitting. So depending on how you want to route it, you can turn this hose anywhere you want. Uh, you can cut that 90 off, so you can either swage it on at the at the corner, which is how they had it on the Toyota coming down over here. Uh, or you can, like I said, you can uh, you could cut the section this hose off right here in the middle somewhere and come down. Depends on where the routing works out best. The swage lock fitting is in the in the uh, ferrule here. The ferrule's in with the fitting right there. Uh, obviously, all of these are loose, so they'll all need to be done tight on the car. I went ahead and got eight feet then of pressure line and that's a male connector on both ends and then that goes to a short connector that converts it to the um, fitting that we need for the power steering rack on the car so that's all the pressure side you generate the pressure in the pump out through this Toyota piece through one two three four supplied components into the rack and then the exit of the rack to a supply component to a low pressure line that low pressure line like to get cut somewhere and uh, put a cooler in there and then the uh, unfitted end goes on the nipple to return back to the uh, reservoir and uh, I did get one extra uh, male and one extra female uh, crimp on fitting so like I said I got eight feet I thought that was more than enough uh, if it can be shorter and you can find somebody that can crimp on a fitting, you can just chop that hose off and crimp on uh, a new male fitting and make it shorter. Um, on the other, on the low pressure side, since one end's undone anyway, you should just be able to cut it anywhere and uh, you'll just need a cooler that has a nipple that can fit, uh, that the hose will fit over. Um, I've got the uh, electrical connectors as well. I'm going to tag out each wire. There's, I think there's only three or four connections required on the cables. I'll pin all those out. Um, and I do, like I said, I have the other, the pigtail side that plugs in here and I'll make another video with that and I'll also label each of those. Uh, so right here, I'll uh, hook all this up and take another short video and hope to hear from you, thanks. All right, here's the tubing done up. So uh, again, High pressure side, eight foot to the rack on the left. On the right is the low pressure side. Uh, again, splice in a cooler there, and that goes back to the reservoir. And all that's extra is uh, two Parker crimp on fittings if, if needed to replace uh, these big fittings if you, uh, again, if you want need to cut the hose down. Uh, if we don't need to, <clears throat> if you can just coil it up, if it's too long, that's fine. You don't need to cut it. I'm probably going to get hard lines made once I get the car back um, and figure out the routing. I'll get some custom lines made that are routed perfectly and uh, done all in metal. And here's the uh, wiring pigtail I got. So these all uh, just plug in and I'll uh, separate out individual wires at the end and uh, label them with where they need to be going. Looks like uh, there's a good number of them used, but we're not going to use nearly as many as they got pinned out there. Okay, here are the electrical connections. Uh, the two pin, uh, the switched. So. I need you to get a uh, 50 amp fuse and a 50 amp uh, relay 
the switch part of the relay. So per the wiring diagram, here's the 50 amp fuse and the 50 amp relay. And then this is the three pigtails. They just have a big blue box, but it represents the three different pigtails. So from the battery to a fuse, to the switched leg on a relay, to positive on the red line. Uh, the ground is uh, the black line, so those two are right there. Um, relay to relay two is labeled relay two, so that goes to the coil side. Um, the uh, the blue line in the in the TT the the switched ignition line. I need that supplied to this ignition plus 12, which is here. And that also is an input to the relay. So basically when switched ignition comes on, the relay comes on, supplies 50 amp source to the pump. And then the controller inside the pump uh, controls the pressure based on uh, its own algorithm. And then the last line is an optional one that I hope will work. So let's hook it up and see, but make it to where you can take it off if it doesn't work. But VSS, um, that is, I've read it's supposed to be the line between the ECU and the cluster VSS. Apparently there's a couple of different ones on the Audi. So again, the one that is the, the one that works on this line is ECU to cluster. If it doesn't work, you can just leave it disconnected and then the pump will run uh, always assuming you need maximum pressure. Uh, when VSS is connected, it reduces the maximum pressure as your speed increases. So in all, one, two, three, four, five wires in the, in the uh, pigtails. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and tape off uh, with black the, uh, the ones that don't go anywhere. And then uh, need to get the relay and the fuse also to be added into that system. I guess they're, they're showing a fuse also, 7.5 amp fuse on the uh, switched uh, power line, I guess, in case your relay shorts. That'd probably be a good one too. So two fuses and a relay. The rest is here. I'm gonna box it all up and get it out to you uh, shortly.